And so, well, so you need structure, you need predictability, and you need more of it than you think, just to keep you sane. Now, if you're lucky, and, and maybe a bit odd, you can deviate 5% from the norm, or 10% from the norm, or something like that, carefully and cautiously, as long as the rest of you is all well-ordered in a normative manner. You might be able to get away with that, and you might be able to sustain it across time, and people might be able to tolerate you if you do it, or maybe you'll get really lucky and you happen to be creative, but reasonably well put together, and people will actually be happy that there's something idiosyncratic and unique about you. But even under those circumstances, mostly what you want is to have a routine that's disciplined, that's predictable, and bloody well stick to it. You're going to be way healthier and happier and saner if you do that. And then the other thing that you need, because this is one of the things the psychoanalysts got wrong, I think, is that they overestimated the degree to which sanity was a consequence of internal, of being properly structured internally, you know? Because from the psychoanalytic point of view, you're sort of an ego, and that ego is inside you. And of course, it rests on an unconscious structure, but the purpose of psychoanalysis is to sort out that unconscious structure and the ego on top of it, and to make you a fully functioning and autonomous individual. But there's a problem with that, because the reason that you're sane as a fully functional and autonomous human being isn't because you've organized your psyche, even though that's important. The reason that you're sane if, you're a we if you have a well-organized unconscious and ego is because other people can tolerate having you around for reasonably extensive periods of time and will cuff you across the back of the head every time you do something so stupid that people will dislike you permanently if you continue. And so what people are doing to each other all the time, just nonstop, is broadcasting sanity signals back and forth, right? It's like you smile at people if they're well, if they're not, not only behaving properly, but behaving in a way that you would like to see them continue to behave, you frown at them if they're not, you ignore them if they're not, you shun them, you, you roll your eyes at them, you manifest a disgust face, you don't listen to them, you interrupt them, you won't cooperate with them, you won't compete with them. It's like you're blasting signals at other people about how to regulate their behavior so frequently, well, it just makes up all of your social interaction. That's why we face each other, and we have emotional displays on our face, and we're looking at each other's eyes, and we know exactly, we know as much as we can about what's going on with each other, given that we don't have immediate access to the contents of their consciousness. And so partly what you're doing with your routine is establishing yourself as a credible, reliable, trustworthy, potentially interesting human being who isn't going to do anything too erratic at any moment. And everyone else is around there tapping you into shape, making sure that that's exactly what you are. And that's how you stay sane. And so what happens to people too if they don't have a routine and they get isolated is they start to drift. And they drift badly because the world is too complicated for you to keep it organized all by yourself. You just cannot do it. So a lot of our, so we outsource the problem of sanity. And it's very intelligent that we outsource the problem of sanity because Sanity is an impossibly complex problem. And so the way that we manage the in incredibly complex problem is we have a very large number of brains working simultaneously on the problem all the time. It's like a stock market for sanity. And it's partly, and I, I, use, that, I use that definition with purpose because the stock market does the same kind of impossible thing, right? Because it tries to price things, which is impossible. There's so, how many things are there? Like a billion. How in the world do you decide what the price is? You can't decide what the price is. That's why you have a stock market. That's, well, in a free market, I mean for, for consumer goods. is Everyone's voting on what the price of everything is all the time. And that's the way we figure it out because it's actually, it's technically impossible. That's partly why the stock market explodes now and then and there's bubbles and all that sort of thing. But anyways, the point is, things are chaotic.